Welcome to the in-step coverage of Villa's Broker of Blood. Hope you're excited to just get your card draw on and talk about a huge demon. Love demons. So it's fun to play demons and magic. But let's go start off with Villas himself, and that's going to be Villas Broker of Blood. So we have eight total mana as the total converted mana cost flying. Then for a black mana activation, pay two life. Target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Then whenever you lose life, draw that many cards. So right there off the bat, you can see with that activated ability, we can pay one black mana, pay two life. That's going to be two card draw right there. That is an insane ability, and I love this. This is a wonderful commander card. Now, one thing that you do want to keep in mind if you want to build this commander is that this is going to be more of a support commander. Um, if you get this down at once you get to eight mana, then pass the turn and hope that he's going to stick around until your next turn or three turns later, that's not how you play this commander. As soon as you get this commander down, you need to be able to cash in some sort of value, whether you have extra mana to go for those activations to draw a few extra cards, maybe you have a few creatures on the battlefield to kind of pay some life to draw some cards, whatever that may be, you need to get some sort of incremental value once this hits the battlefield, because if you tap out for 8 mana and your opponent destroys your commander, odds are you're probably going to lose the game by the time you get to 10 mana, recast this commander, and somebody else kind of takes care of it too. So long story short, just think of this commander as a support commander. You need to make sure that the battlefield is ripe and ready for him to enter it, and then you can kind of set up whatever sort of card draw you need to go for. He's, he's very much a diva demon. He wants things to be his certain way. He needs certain tools on the battlefield, and he wants to make sure you can cash in some of that card draw. Now, there's one thing that you do want to keep in mind with your deck building, and this needs to be a very heavy mana deck. You're going to have a lot of mana rocks in here you need to get to that eight mana as quickly as possible and since you're drawing a ton of cards you wouldn't be able to cast those cards as quickly as possible charcoal diamond soul ring gilded lotus these are all some good options worn power stone hedron archive thran dynamo um, you don't necessarily have to have all colored mana but just being able to get ahead on mana at every step of your turn whether it's turn one turn two turn three that's really going to help you turn that out same thing with some of the moxes you know there's going to be a lot of times where you finally get your commander down you can use mox diamond or crow mox that's going to allow you to kind of start feeling Feeling some stuff out of your hand all oh, and also kind of get you some storm count which we'll talk about later in the video and the same thing with mox amber and mox uh, opal uh, both of these you know you can be running a ton of artifacts in your deck so mox opal is pretty much going to be one of the first things you get down and then mox amber is going to be a great thing to where if you're trying to combo off if you're trying to draw a lot of cards um, being able to have your commander on the battlefield and drawn to mox amber that's just basically going to be free extra land drop which is exactly what you want to do in this deck. Now, the other thing that you definitely want to do is protect your commander. Your commander costs eight total mana. Um, it's going to be an immediate threat as soon as it hits the battlefield. You've got three people staring back at you like, we need to deal with that commander. So you need to be able to protect that commander very cheaply. Cards like Supernatural Stamina and Undying Evil, these are great ways to make sure your commander is going to go back onto the battlefield really quick if they have some sort of destruction spell, and you can kind of cheat that commander attack. So with Supernatural Stamina and Undying Evil, this is basically going to give them undying so if somebody goes for a destruction spell it's going to die make if you're playing on magic online make sure you do have your commander go back to the graveyard not the command zone so once it goes to the graveyard it's going to come back and you can basically just kind of negated that destruction spell for just one black mana now blessing is that's not technically kind of like a recursion spell but it is nice in a deck where you're paying a bunch of life to have one black mana a life link plus two plus one um, that's going to be some good life gain you can get and Kind of trade that in for some card draw. And of course, you're going to run some sort of protection, Swift Foot Boots and Lightning Greaves. Um, these are cheap, effective ways to make sure your commander stays protected. So let's say that we get our commander down. We're going to go to equip the Swift Foot Boots. Somebody in response to that equip activation goes for a destruction spell. Then you can go for Supernatural Stamina in response to that. There you go. Get it, make sure your commander's nice and protected and then go from there. So, But you do want to have some sort of protection. And uh, no matter what sort of build you have, running some sort of package like this is going to be certainly a great thing to make sure that sticks on the battlefield. And before we jump into the video, Nekasaur Alert. Um, these two commanders, they love drawing cards. So what's going to happen is if you're playing against an Nekasaur opponent and you get your commander down, um, Nekasaur and Villas, they're just going to high-five each other until you basically run out of life. <laughs> what's going to happen is uh, whenever an opponent draws a card, you deal. Nekasaur is going to deal one damage to that opponent. Once you get dealt one damage, Villas is going to be like, yes, we get to draw a card. So they're basically just going to keep high-fiving until you run out of life total, which um, they're going to have a lot of fun, but you're not going to have a lot of fun because uh, you just lost the game. So that is definitely something you want to keep in mind. If you're playing against Nekasaur, just, you might as well just not get your commander down. Or the other way that you can disrupt this loop is by getting rid of Nekasaur or the actual commander itself. So you're not dead in the water. It's just if you have no interaction with either of these commanders to destroy one of them or at least sacrifice your commander to send it to the graveyard or back to the command zone, um, they're just going to high-five each other and have a really good time drawing a bunch of cards. And uh, Villas just 
doesn't know that Nekasaur is like secretly really happy that you're about to lose the game. So that's something you definitely want to keep in mind. Now, some of the best creatures that you can run in your villa stack, Doom Whisperer, Dread Presence, Yawgmoth, these are all ways to interact with paying life. And that's going to give you some nice uh, card draw. That's going to give you some really nice steady card draw over the course of the game. Um, there's a lot of cards in this deck that it's going to make you pay a lot of life really quick. But cards like Doom Whisperer and Yawgmoth, these are going to be slow incremental life loss that you can go for and kind of slow steady card draw, which is exactly what you need to do with this deck. Uh, Doom Whisperer, that's going to allow you to surveil, dump some cards in the graveyard. Uh, Dread Presence, which is a wonderful card for Mono Black Commander that <laughs> released in the new set. Uh, whenever a swamp enters the battlefield, and especially if you're playing Urborg, that's going to turn all of your lands into swamps. So whenever basically landfall, whenever land enters the battlefield, draw a card and you lose a life. Then once you lose that life with your commander on the battlefield, that's going to be another card draw. So you can definitely see where Dread Presence is a wonderful option for the deck. And with Yawgmoth, you can pay one life, sacrifice another creature, um, put another one, and then draw another card. So basically with the Yawgmoth, that's going to be uh, paying, drawing two cards. That is some good options right there. Some other good things that you can go for, uh, Midnight Reaper, uh, whenever one of your creatures dies, it's going to deal one damage to you and you get to cash in a card draw. So basically you're kind of turning a lot of these uh, cards into kind of two for ones with Midnight Reaper on the battlefield. And then with Filthy uh, Cur, I keep wanting to say cat because it looks like a cat and when I'm looking at my slides it looks... Like it sells filthy cat, but it's not a cat. Uh, but anyway, whenever it's dealt damage, you lose that much life. So you can get this on the battlefield. Let's say your opponent swings in with an 8-8. You can block with your filthy cat, and uh, which you need to give a bath. And then you're going to take that 8 damage and draw 8 cards. So that's another way that you can slowly sit back and kind of cash in some card draw. Because like I mentioned, um, if you go 100 miles an hour with the life loss and drawing a bunch of cards, and you can't combo off when you do that, you're probably going to lose the game because you're spending so much of your life as a resource. Um, it it is greatness at any cost if you're playing this deck. You do want to spend your life total to draw cards, but you want to have some sort of control element. You want to have some sort of safety valve to where you're not just immediately, you know, put your life total down from 40 down to 5 and everybody's like, all right, we're just going to go throw a couple lightning bolts over there and then that player is done. Uh, some other good options are going to be Erebo, Dark Confidant, and if, especially if you're feeling like greatness at any cost with Dark Confidant, um, there's a lot of high converted mana cost cards in this deck, so, but hey. I'm probably going to be running Dark Confidant in my deck cause, because, you know, the, the the thought of flipping something that's 6 or 7, losing 6 or 7, drawing 6 or 7, oh, that sounds pretty good. Um, Erebos is going to be, once again, it's going to be that safety valve of card draw. And uh, Street Wraith, you know, this is a really good, just basically it's going to be like an ancestral recall for 3. You know, you pay 2 life, cycle this card, draw a card, then you get to draw 2 cards because you pay 2 life. So Street Wraith is a wonderful addition to get down. Um, it does have Swamp Walk for 5 mana, so um, there's other things you can be doing, but more mostly you're going to be using it for that cycling effect because paying two life to draw three cards at instant speed is a uh, whole oh. That's some good commander right now. Now, some of the other good utility creatures you can run for your deck that are definitely kind of interesting. I love Tavern Swind Swindler in this deck because you can pay three life. So right off the bat, you're drawing three cards from an activated ability. Then flip a coin. If you win the flip, you gain six life. So basically, it's like you go for an activation, draw three cards, then you just gain six life if you get lucky with the coin flip. So... Either way, you're probably going to be going for those activations turn after turn because, once again, it's kind of that nice controlled life loss. Um, but in the fact that you gain six life, it's going to negate at least the next two activations that you go for. So, so it's kind of like free real estate. Uh, same thing with Guards as Assassin. Um, sacrifice a creature, destroy target non-black creature. What you can do with this is you can go for that recovery. You can pay half of your life total to bring it back. And that's going to allow you to just basically, you know, let's say you're at 40 life, you're going to draw 20 cards. And that's going to be a good thing to go for. Once again, Again, paying half of your life is definitely going to make you an immediate threat at the table. So if you're going to be running cards like this, you're going to have some sort of option to close the game out um, as soon as you go for that. But it is worth noting you have that. And the same thing with Vesper Ghoul, like I was talking about. You can pay that li that one life to add mana to your mana pool. And uh, that's going to be some nice, slow, incremental card draw, especially if you want to take this deck into a little bit more of just kind of like a mono black control or mono black, just good stuff deck. Um, having that safety valve of just kind of slow, consistent card draw um, spread out through a lot of different uh, Permanence is a good thing to go for. Um, Hex Parasite, uh, Kegamaro, and then Eden Blade Reaper. These are also good options you can run in your deck with Hex Parasite. That's going to keep a lot of your opponent's Planeswalkers in control. And once again, kind of go for that activated ability of paying life for Frexian mana. Um, you're probably going to have a lot of cards in your hands. So if you get first to suffer down, um, that's going to be a great way to just have one black mana board wipe to give all the creatures uh, minus X, minus X, or X the number of cards in your hand. And then same thing with Garza's Assassin. With this Reaper, whenever it attacks, you're going to lose half of your life total, and um, that's going to be a lot of card draw. 
So, um, as far as Guards as Assassin and Reaper, you know, like I mentioned, these are cards that you want to keep in mind with your deck building. You don't want to just have nothing to do, swing in, and draw 20 cards, and not have anything to show for it. So, if you're going to be running those, you want to have some sort of uh, win condition built into your deck, or if you're drawing 20 cards, uh, you should be able to close it out. Now, let's move outside of the creatures. There's some really good tutors you can run in here that basically just put them right into your hand. A Vampiric Tutor, and all of these cards make you put the card on top of your library, and then you lose life. So, to my understanding, and I'm 99% sure I'm correct on this, I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm correct. Um, all of these cards put the card on top, then you have that life loss, and that's going to allow you to draw the card. So, Vampiric Tutor, put it on top, lose two life, that's basically a tutor for one, draw two cards same thing with a grim tutor um put it on top then draw three cards and the same thing with cruel tutor put a card on top and draw two cards so it's nice to be able to run a tutor effect that gets the card that you need and it's like hey why don't you just cash in a little bit extra card draw while you're here now this is mono black there's a lot of card draw in black and uh, now depending on how heavy you want to go on these card draw you can really just go with a lot of these lower converted to mana cost card draw to make sure you can have that smooth consistent but like sign in blood that's going to be two mana draw two cards lose two life which equates to four cards um, Skeletal Scrying, you do need to kind of set your graveyard up to go for this, but Skeletal Scrying can set up to be a really nice effect, and it is instant speed, so you can go for this at the end of your opponent's turn, exile a bunch of stuff from your graveyard, uh, let's say you exile 8 cards, you're going to pay 8 life, draw 8 cards, and next thing you know, you're looking at 16 cards, simply just kind of removing those cards from the graveyard. Wonderful way to kind of set up a win condition once it kind of kicks over to your turn. And then same thing with uh, Knight's Whisper, like Signing Blood. You know, that's going to be a lose two life, draw four cards. Now, they're a really good option of three mana draw spells. Painful Truths, Painful Lessons, Live Fast. All of these have some sort of pay two life, draw two cards. So essentially, these are going to be cards that you'll be running in a mono black deck anyway. And these are great ways that once you finally do get your commander down, you can pay that three mana to simply just cash in four card draw, which is exactly what you need to be doing with this deck. Now, moving on to the four drops, there's also, once again, you know, it basically just kind of goes from two to three to four mana. Um, with the four drop, it's going to be draw three cards, lose three life. So basically, it's going to be six total card draw that you're going for. And like I mentioned earlier, if you want to go just completely full out card draw, there's Cruel, Bargain, Cruel Bargain and Infernal Contract. Uh, draw four cards and lose half of your life rounded up. So you get to draw the four cards and lose half your life. And like I said, if you're going to be going for this, you probably need to be winning the game because you're going to be an immediate threat at the table uh, depending on what your life total is. So that's definitely something you want to keep in mind. Now, like I mentioned earlier, you want to have that slow, consistent card draw. There's a lot of enchantments that allow you to get that really nice card draw. Uh, Frexian Arena and Underworld Connections. These are going to be really good, consistent card draw. Now, Necropotence, it's basically just pay one life. That's going to be a lot of card draw. Um, Necropotence is kind of going to fit into that spot of, you know, you're probably going to need to win with that on the battlefield because that's just going to be an immediate threat at the table. But Frexian Arena and Underworld Connections, these are great options to make sure you can slowly kind of bring that card draw in. And um, once again, with Dark Tutelage, it's very much like the Dark Confidant thing. You're going to be flipping the top card of your library. Um, if you flip a land, that's no life loss so that's going to be no card draw but if you flip something that's six or seven mana that's going to be six or seven card draw so that's where kind of dark tutelage and dark confidant um, they do slot into the deck well but there may be some times to where you know if you're normally running dark confidant you don't want him to hit but in this deck you do want him to hit something high to go for that life loss and then also with greed you know this is a great enchantment to run for the deck and get this down go for those black mana activations uh, that's basically just one black mana draw three cards Whew. That's exactly what you need to be doing with this deck. Um, outside of these uh, the particular enchantments, there's also some kind of unique uh, enchantments that give you some sort of added benefit. Um, Carnival of Souls, a really cool card for the deck. Whenever a creature comes into play, you lose a life and add black mana to your mana pool. And this counts for any creature. You know, if your opponents start getting down creatures, now you do have to watch out. You know, if your opponent goes for a living death, um, that's going to be a lot of triggers. And that's probably, especially if you're in a multiplayer game, if somebody goes living death, that's going to be a lot of, uh, well, living death's going to get rid of your commander. But long story short, let's say your opponent gets a ton of creatures on the battlefield at once. Maybe it's a Avenger of Zendikar, uh, that might be a good game for you, a Cavern of Souls on the battlefield, but it's a nice way to kind of keep that incremental card draw going as time goes on, and, you know, there's a lot of instant speed interactions you can go for with Carnival of Souls, and you can go for Doomblade, Removal, whatever that may be. Unspeakable Symbol, this is one of those cards that's basically going to allow you, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, um, if you're getting your commander down, you would get some sort of value as soon as it comes down. Uh, with Unspeakable Symbol, that's going to allow you to pay three life. This is going to basically just allow you to draw your deck out, you know, even if you go for the 
these activations targeting your commander and then they go for removal. Uh, in response to that removal, you can just kind of keep drawing more cards. Um, so this is one of those effects that, um, you know, also, you know, it's an activated ability. So you can just activate it at the end of your opponent's turn, draw a bunch of cards and not have to worry about the discard. So um, once you kind of have that pay life outlet, you don't necessarily have to draw your entire deck out. But it is nice to know that you can do that as soon as your commander's on the battlefield. Same thing with Frexian Reclamation, you're probably going to be drawing a lot of cards in your deck, so if you have to discard down the hand size, uh, what you can do is dump some of those creatures into the graveyard, and with Frexian Reclamation, that's going to allow you to bring those cards back and cash in some card draw, which is a uh, very nice effect. Now, once again, keeping on theme with that slow, steady card draw, you want to kind of incorporate into your deck building. Uh, Dreadhorde Invasion and Bitter Blossom, these are going to be great ways that you can kind of build your board state. Uh, you can amass some zombie tokens and lose that one life to go for card draw. And then Bitter Blossom, that's going to give you that fairy and that life loss. And um, once again, you know, if you're going to be doing, you're probably going to be a pretty big threat at the table if you're playing this commander. And both of these options give you some sort of board state at like a really low cost. You know, you're going to be able to lose that life loss, you get your commander down, and that's going to allow you to protect whatever sort of stuff you're getting down whether it's planeswalkers or your live total simply just throwing a 1-1 black fairy into something that doesn't have trample is going to buy you time to hopefully get your commander down and uh, start cashing in some card draw now this is mono black there's a ton of removal options out there and these are some of the best removal cards that you can run for your deck snuff out it's basically you're going to be controlling a swamp with this card this is basically just pay for life and draw four cards and destroy target creature non-black creature that is just such a nice effect in this deck i can't wait for go for this and then vendetta this is a wonderful card a destroy target non-black creature you lose life equal to its toughness so this is a good option for you know like i mentioned you want to kind of control your life loss for card draw with vendetta you know if it's late game you need to get some sort of action you can destroy a bigger creature cash in a lot of card draw to find some sort of answer you can use it to pop you know a two or three power toughness creature whatever that may be uh, you're in control of what you can go for with vendetta and the same thing with ulcerate even if you don't get rid of that creature this basically just ulcerate is just an ancestral recall you know target creature gets minus three minus three uh, you lose three life. That's going to be three card draw. You can even use it on your commander if you want to as a little bit of a can trip. So, <laughs> so it makes this commander so busted. I love it. Um, same thing with Dismember and Toxic Deluge. Um, with Toxic Deluge, it's actually really interesting. So uh, you pay x life to make all creatures get minus x minus x let's say the biggest creature is a 5 5 you can overpay you can pay 15 you can pay 20 if you have all creatures get minus 20 minus 20 that's going to be 20 life total that's going to be 20 card draw it's going to allow you to hopefully combo off right there and then with dismember that's going to be at one mana draw four cards and then target creature gets minus five minus five so Running some sort of package of these, no matter what sort of build you have of your actual commander, you want to run at least these five cards because they're such high impact in a deck like this. But yeah, Toxic for 20. <laughs> 20 card draw. Yes, yeah, sign me up. Um, there's some older removal that's actually pretty cool. Uh, Wicked Pack, destroy any two creatures, you lose five lives. So that's basically just kind of like a eight for one or seven for one. You get rid of two creatures, then draw five cards. Whoa, really good. Uh, Reign of Daggers is also a really good option. You know, this is a ramp deck. You want to get as much mana as possible. So Reign of Daggers are a really good thing. And in Commander, having a one-sided board wipe is such a good effect. It's such a good tempo loss for your opponents. So destroy all creatures, target opponent control, you lose two life for each creature destroyed this way uh, you know you don't want to blast this against a green white tokens opponent but if your opponent's only got four or five creatures blow up their entire board state that's going to be 10 card draw that is a really good effect for six total mana and the same thing with slaughter you didn't destroy target non-black creature it is instant speed and being able to go for that buyback of four life bringing that back to your hand um and make sure you have that really good card draw. And also, Devour and Shadow and Killing Wave. Um, Devour and Shadow is very much like the uh, Vendetta we talked about earlier. And then with Killing Wave, you can tap out and have a bunch of, you know, we're running Bitter Blossom in here potentially. So with Killing Wave, uh, we have a lot of tokens on the battlefield. We go for Killing Wave where X equals 5. We can just go and pay that 5 life and cash in 15 card draw, whatever you need to do. So uh, Killing Wave is a great option to kind of wipe the entire board out. Or at the same time, uh, be really aggressive with paying that life and keeping some of your creatures on the battlefield and turning that into card draw, which is always good. Now, one thing I've been talking about this entire video is just slow, consistent life loss to make sure you can kind of control that card draw. One of the best ways to do that is by running Pain Lands in here. It's very much like a Darien mana base. So Tarnish Citadel, um, this is going to be a great thing. You can get it down at a colorless mana to your mana pool, but add one color of any mana, that's going to deal three damage to you. So you tap down Tarnish Citadel. That's going to be basically draw three cards. 
it's pretty good. I just keep getting, like, the fact that there's so many ways that you can just, like, get three card draw. It's so easy. It just blows my mind. Um, Ancient Tomb, this is going to help you ramp some of those mana rocks out and get your commander out, and at the same time, deal two damage to you. And, of course, Besage, you know, if you're playing against some blue players, you may have all the card draw in the world, but if they can counter your big payoff spell, that doesn't do you any good. So, Besage, that's going to allow you to pay two live, cash in two card draw, and make, you know, something like Torment of Hellfire, where you've added a bunch of mana to your mana mana pool be something that's going to definitely resolve and not get hit by a counter spell um same thing with mana confluence and city of brass um all of these cards are very unique in that if you're this is mono black so you're going to be running urborg so once you find urborg and get down some combination of these lands you're not going to be taking a ton of damage from these and these are the exact lands that i'm talking about earlier in the game where once you get your commander down you need to get some sort of value and these are perfect for that because you get your commander down maybe you haven't been taking a lot of life loss because urborg on the battlefield then you can start tapping some of these down once your commander comes down to make sure you have some of that card draw so basically urborg is going to be a great option for you to kind of stop some of that same thing with grand coliseum if near dead lands inspire you can have some sort of paid land that also comes down to where you can at least add colorless mana to your mana pool to where you're not paying a lot of life to just basically kind of do your normal stuff to set up a good win condition for your commander and of course fetch lands you know basically these fetch lands um you know unfortunately in mono black you don't really have any shock lands but um with a fetch land you crack it that's going to be instant card draw right there you can find yourself a swamp and that's going to be good to go and then also cards like glacial chasm you know cumulative upkeep pay two life um enters the battlefield you have to sack a land then creatures you control can attack and prevent all damage that would be dealt to you so you get down glacial chasm you don't want to get it down like turn one that's going to be a lot of life loss but this is something that you can go for two life loss then four life loss then six life loss and that should make it to where you've drawn enough cards to hopefully uh, close the game out like i mentioned earlier urborg and coffers this is going to be a great way to make sure you have a ton of mana and at the same time make sure some of these pain lands aren't going to make you lose simply by just getting them down and trying to do what you're normally going to do now there's some cool artifacts that allow you to lose some life acorn catapult um you know and these are kind of more things that if you're not trying to combo off with this commander um, these are good ways to just get that steady card draw so acorn catapult is going to deal one damage to you that's going to give you a squirrel on the battlefield and you get one card draw so for one mana you get a squirrel and a card draw sign me up uh, bowl of the citadel you're going to lose life if you cast it off the top of your library and then a staff of nin you know you can get that card draw at the beginning of your upkeep and if you, there's nothing you really want to ping with staff and then you can just target yourself and then go for another card draw um also Mana Crypt and Mana Vault. These are cards that are going to help you get your commander out. And also, you're going to be keeping your fingers crossed that you just basically miss your Mana Crypt trigger because you want that three damage dealt to you. That's going to be three card draw. Mana Vault's really going to help you power out your commander. And then you can just leave it tapped and just be that extra consistent card draw. So there's a lot of ways with artifacts. You can kind of get that slow card draw, which is really going to help you get some stuff moving. And drawing out so one of the things that you want to do with this deck if you're going to be drawing out you want to draw a ton of cards and hopefully close the game out temporal extortion this is one of those cards that you can counter the spell to pay half of your life total and that's going to be a lot of card draw or you can simply just go for an extra turn and if you're going for an extra turn with this deck you should be winning that next turn so if somebody does try to counter you can at least pay that half life total gain some life a phrexian processor it's going to enter the battlefield pay any amount of life so with phrexian processor I mean, if you're at 40, you have this end of the battlefield, you pay 39, you're going to draw 39 cards. There you go. This could be a lot of card draw. Um, same thing with Ad Nauseam. You're going to reveal the top card of your library, put it in your hand. You're going to lose life equal to the converted mana cost. Then you can repeat this process uh, any number of times. So basically, it's going to be just like boom, 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 like a ton of Dark Confidant triggers. Um, these are all great ways that you can just draw a ton of cards as quickly as possible. Same thing with Soul Channeling. You know, this is going to be some good protection for our commander, but you can pay that two life repeat basically just kind of cash in card draw and then hatred you know this is going to be an option to where you know if you're going to swing in your opponent people aren't really going to be expecting this hatred card so for five mana you can make sure you can deal commander damage to somebody and draw a ton of cards to deal with the rest of the table so you can definitely one shot somebody with hatred and i promise you if you one shot somebody with hatred that's going to be their look <laughs> as you go for hatred and they don't have any spot removal they're gonna like, they're going to be mad um the other option of drawing out is going to be mischievous pull i just love finding cards that represent your opponents whenever you go for a win it's just a really fun thing to do um mischievous Folter guys blood celebrant and deepwood ghoul these are all options that once you have these down early game uh, you're going to be able to pay that life with a lot of these cards and basically just draw your entire deck out so uh, whatever you want to do with that hey 
have some fun, but these are the cards that have definitely allow you to do some busted things. So if we're going to be drawing into a lot of cards in our deck, we do need to do some sort of wind condition. And one of the fun ways to go is for some sort of storm effect. Aether Flux Reservoir, Sentinel Tower, Tendrils of Agony. These are all great ways where if you draw a ton of cards, you have access to a ton of mana, you can win the game the turn you draw a bunch of cards with Aether Flux Reservoir. Uh, you can pay that 50 life and deal 50 damage to target creature or player. You do have to storm a lot of cards though, because you're probably paying a bunch of life to draw a lot of cards and uh, you have to get back up to 50 but it's entirely possible with what you've got going on and then sentinel tower that's going to be a little bit of an easier way um you're going to basically have just kind of that nice storm effect that's going to basically just kind of stack as more instant sorceries get cast during your turn so let's say that your opponent casts some counter magic uh while you're trying to get ready to storm off that's going to count towards sentinel tower and of course tendrils of agony uh, once you build up enough of a storm count with tendrils you can make target player lose two life and uh, you gain two life or you know you can actually just use Tendrils of Agony is a cantrip. So let's say it's early game. Um, you've got your commander down. You can't really get a lot of action going. If you just cast a couple different spells and Tendril yourself, that's going to be just free card draw. Uh, target player loses two life. We lose two life. Then we gain two life. So basically, it's just going to negate itself. And it's going to be two card draw, two card draw, two card draw, depending on how much storm you got going for the turn. Being able to storm off, you need some sort of cantrip, some sort of ritual. So Dark Ritual, Cabal Ritual, Reign of Filth. There's actually a lot of really good mono black spells that are cheap and give you access to a ton of mana. Um, simply just being able to cast Dark Ritual, add three mana to your mana pool, count towards Aether Flux Reservoir and Sentinel Tower, and it's really going to help you get this thing kick-started. Same thing with Ritual. Um, you're probably Cabal Ritual you're probably going to have Threshold active by the time you're getting ready to draw a lot of your cards. So that's going to give you access to five mana. And with Reign of Filth, you know, if you're going to be winning the turn, it doesn't matter if you have lands anymore. So you can sacrifice your swamps to add black mana to your mana pool. Um, same thing with Songs of the Damned. You do have to have a little bit of setting up by having creature cards in the graveyard. But if you just have like a normal commander game, you probably have in the range of 5 to 10 creatures in your graveyard. Going for Songs of the Damned with one black mana to get 5 or 10 mana... It's a great way to get up, get ahead on mana. And of course, culling the weak. You know, this is basically sacrifice one of your creatures, add four mana to your mana pool. You can sacrifice your commander if you need to, um, or you can just sacrifice one of the bitter blossom tokens that we talked about earlier. Um, there's also sacrifice, or sacrifice one of your creatures, and you can add mana equal to its compared to mana cost. So you can get your commander down, and I'm sure Villas would be like, yes, for the greater good, uh, sacrifice Villas, and then that's going to give you access to eight mana, and that should get it kick started. And if you need to find some of the wind condition you know let's say you have all the rituals and you can't find it uh, dark petition and plunge into darkness these are great ways that you can pay a bunch of life and find that high impact card that you need right then and there and especially with dark petition you know you're gonna have that spell mastery and the fact that it kind of pays for itself and gives you a little bit of extra mana and count towards storm count is a very nice thing to go for now outside of storm one of the things you can do this is a ramp deck this is a coffers deck you want to generate a ton of mana and that's going to be exsanguinate profane command consume spirit torment of hellfire you want to have some sort of X spell because let's say that you can't one shot the table by at least running four copies of these cards in here, or at least this package right here. That's going to allow you to put some really big hurt on the table and at least just kind of knock players out one by one. Um, you might be able to one shot them depending on how much mana you have, but being able to at least kind of have some sort of you know options spread out between four cards is definitely going to allow you to close the game out. And it is worth noting with Consume Spirit, uh, you can only spend black mana. Um, you gain X life. So that's another way that if you're paying a bunch of life, let's say you pay half your life total, Consume Spirit's going to allow you to kind of get a little bit of that life gain back and make sure you can wait till the last of the game. Now, there's some other fun ways that you can pay some life total and your opponent will not see these cards coming. And I promise you run these cards because they're a lot of fun. Uh, Withering Boon is a two mana activation counter target non-creature spell pay three life. So um, I can't tell you how many times like I, I like running Withering Boon in certain mono black decks because people never expect it. But you leave two mana up. And your opponent's just like, all right, is this good? And then you just go for Withering Boon and you counter the spell and their face is always just, yep, all right, you got me. So, but anyway, it's a good way to counter a creature spell. You can counter somebody's commander and cash in three card draw, which is a huge tempo win for you. Um, same thing with Imps Mischief. You definitely want to protect your commander. So let's see your opponent's going for, you know, Path to Exile is not that good with Imps Mischief, but if they're going for you know, Damnation, well, Damnation is not going to work, but if they have any sort of targeted spell against your commander that has some sort of decent converted mana cost, you can use Imps Mischief to kind of redirect it to somewhere else and cash in some card draw. Um, same thing with Dash Hopes. Whenever you play it, any player 
may pay five life to counter the spell. So you can counter a spell, and if they want to pay that five life, you can. I think you can also pay five life to counter it too, depending on where at what point in the game. So if you want to counter something, then pay that five five life to counter it. Uh, you're good to go. And also. This is another good option package to kind of run in your deck. Wall of Blood, Rite of Consumption, and Essence Harvest. So with Wall of Blood, that's definitely going to allow you to combo off. Uh, you can draw a bunch of cards. If you're at 40, you can go all the way down to 1. And then with Rite of Consumption or Essence Harvest, you can sacrifice that creature to deal damage to a target player. And then you're going to gain that life. So it's basically just kind of like a free win. It's almost like a combo within the deck. Now you are kind of open to some spot removal because of those activations they respond to those activations but if nobody has an answer for wall of blood or let's say you very slowly put swift foot boots onto wall of blood nobody does anything um this is basically going to be a one shot at the table with right of consumption or essence harvest so that's a fun way to uh close the game out somebody won't see that coming and of course you would run some some sort of reanimator package i would reanimate put target creature on from the graveyard on the battlefield and um, that will let's say that our commander's in the graveyard we go for reanimate that's going to be eight card draw because you're losing eight life to the converted mana cost and the same thing with frexian delver chainer and command the dread horde these are all ways that you're going to be paying life bringing back some sort of value to the board and cashing in that card draw Command the Dread Horde is a wonderful card for this deck at 6 mana. It is such a huge tempo swing for you. You can bring any number of creatures or planeswalkers back to your side of the battlefield. You're going to lose that life and cash in a ton of card draw. So I highly recommend Command the Dread Horde for your deck because that's going to be, you know, let's face it, if you have your commander down, you're probably going to win anyway. But Command the Dread Horde, if you're building a more fair version of this deck, is a wonderful way to generate a ton of value on your side of the board. Now that is going to bring us to the end step. I hope you enjoyed this deck tech. Um, like I mentioned, if you're building this commander you definitely want to keep in mind that you need to have a lot of mana rocks in here and um you know there's two different ways you want to take this you know if you want to kind of combo off you know make sure you have a lot of your storm pieces in there or if you just want to build a fair version of this deck you know just run a lot of slow incremental card draw and uh play some of those fun big mono black spells you can play withering boon your opponent won't see that coming but uh, that is going to be it for the deck tech and like i mentioned in a lot of these videos if there's something that i miss i wish i could cover every interaction with commanders but i can't we'd be here all day so if there's something that you're going to be putting into your deck make sure you leave it down in the comments or if there's an interaction or a combo that i didn't cover put it in the comments because people are going to be watching this video and that way they can check it and kind of see anything that they may want to add to their deck but that is going to be it in fact if you enjoyed the video like and subscribe thanks bye